Welcome back to Lucro Automotive Services. Today I'm working on a 2005 Toyota Tundra with a 4.7 liter 2UZFE V8 engine. This uh, actually really pretty pretty nice truck. Uh, it's got 160,000 miles on it. This was actually towed to us by one of our friendly tow drivers. It's here several times a week. And uh, He's like, hey, I'm bringing this truck down from, from the shop down the street. I'm like, huh? He's like, yeah, they did a few things. They can't figure it out, so they said to send it down to you. I'm like, okay. So he dumped it in a lot, and now it's my problem. If you guys want to see what I'm going to do with it, stick around. It should be fun. So this Toyota sat outside for a couple days. We finally got around to it, and... Uh, Pulled it into the bay with my wrecker, and we did a few things, checked a few things. We checked for spark, we checked for fuel, and we had spark, we had fuel. We pulled the spark plugs out, and I'm like, AC Delcos, 41602s, like, that sounds like a GM spark plug, but it's probably correct for the car. Uh, but we ended up getting some uh, Denzos for it, which are actually correct for the car. We put those in there. Still, it would just crank. It sounded like it had compression. I'm like, let's. This truck's got 160,000 miles on it. We don't know what's been done to it. It looks like it's been sitting for a while. Let's do a compression test. Let's make sure we're not beating a dead horse. So we do a compression test, and it shows compression. It doesn't show great compression. It's like one. 45 to 170 in different cylinders. I'm like, well, those are weird readings. It seems low. So we do some more tests, and we don't find anything. We don't have any error codes. We have RPM cranking from the from the cam sensors. We, you know, cam sensor crank sensors are all showing RPM. I'm like, we have an abnormality in this engine. And uh, turns out, timing belt jumped but yet it's still making compression. So that was tricky. So at any rate, I'm gonna put a timing belt on this car. I've got a Gates kit here, a Gates Master Kit, which uh, this is the Power Grip Kit, which has all the pulleys and a water pump and a belt. I'm gonna stick this thing on here. Normally I would put camshaft, camshaft seals in this vehicle um, or any vehicle when I'm doing a timing belt. But since this car came to us not running, and the cam sensor, the cam seals are not leaking. I'm just going to put the belt on it so that we can make sure the thing runs before we waste any more time or money on parts. But we are going to hang a full kit on it um, and then run, make it run, because I think it's going to run just fine. We wouldn't have compression numbers if we had bent valves. So that's the big question with the 4.7. It's classified as an interference engine. But is it? You can actually see, I'll show you. You can actually see my timing mark is on zero. But up here, this is my timing mark. Right there, and my timing, my cam is all the way over here. Timing mark's on zero? Yep. Timing marks 40 degrees off. That's gonna flare real bad. Timing marks here. I can't even see that timing mark. I'm guessing that's the timing mark there. It's not painted on this one, but it's quite a lot off. It's quite a bit. So the crank pulley jump time, and I can't see one right now. You can see over here where the back of the belt's starting to fray. Right mm -hmm. there. It's still an original Toyota bolt uh, belt, so more than likely it's never been changed. How many miles are on this? 160. Oh, so it was a... So it was due 60,000 miles ago. <laughs> you can actually see right here, maybe. I don't know if you can see it or not. There's a lump in the in the belt, like, like it's got a tumor. Yep. And I think a uh, dirt dauber built a nest in here, and now we've got dirt dauber bits in the in the belt. But I won't know that until I get it off. 
What is that word? Maintenance. <sighs> Timing belts are critical. Uh, they are a critical component. Man. Especially on a loader that can go bing bang boom and breaks things. Yeah, it's classified skips. as an interference engine. Whether or not it is or not is questionable. But yeah, well, I'm gonna hang the kit on it and see. It it had compression before I cranked it some more. Yeah. But uh, I gotta get this done before uh, before you leave. Before I leave, so and I got a column to rebuild in that BMW. Did you park? You get some find an ignition locks on it. I, I did. Me and my amazing finding yeah. skills. There you go. So this one, when you when you turn the key on this side. That little guy turns where that one out there, this guy doesn't, doesn't turn. Do anything. It doesn't it just sit, it just sits there. Yeah. But unfortunately this means I have to pull the entire column out of the car and do a complete disassembly of it. The column goes through there. Because yes, the column goes through there. Yeah. So I'm not looking forward to that, but that's that's on my tomorrow job to do. Today was rear axle and It smells like gear oil still. Yeah, it's horrible. I'm gonna smell like gear oil for three days. <laughs> My wife's not going to want me to come near her. I'm going to have to sleep on the couch. <laughs> well, then you can go rinse it off with the sand and surf. Rinse, rinse it off with jet skis and rum. There you go. That sounds like a great way to spend it. I know, right? Well, let's see if we can strip this thing down because it's not going to fix itself. There's some trickery to get this out without too much hassle. I think I'm going to need a 10, a 12, and a 14. And some spring clamps. Let's collect some tools. Timing belt replacement. Lexus and Toyota 4 liter 4.3, 4.7 V8 from 1998 till 2010. Manufacturer recommends the belt be replaced at 90,000 miles or 72 months. Maintenance. This application is an interference engine. Do not rotate camshaft or crankshaft when timing belt is removed or engine damage may occur. Yippee. Well, I think we'll be able to figure it out. I need to get some glasses. It's really small writing. They need to write this in old people writing, old people print. Let's get to it. A lot of stuff in my way. Let go, Toyota. Pull the alternator off because it's blocking my path. Stinker. Point six eight eight pounds. Well, that AC system wasn't working. It's all right. We can fix that too. Make it run first. I decided to go ahead and evacuate my AC system because it gives me easier access to a couple bolts. Basically, I'm going to pop the line off and that way I can drop the air compressor and then the bracket that the air compressor bolts to, which allows the fan bearing support housing to come loose. Once that guy's out of the way, I'm pretty much ready to pull my belt off. It's after six, I'm going home. I'm gonna finish this in the morning. You'll see me here, real lickety split. Another timing belt's free. Let's uh, pull our tensioner, we'll pull our belt off, pull our pulleys, pull our water pump. 
put our new parts on and we'll go back together. Hold the grenade pin. This is where everything goes zing. Some sort of foreign material in there. In a few spots. Well, looks like the squirrels were hiding the acorns in the under the timing cover. That's probably what did it. Get one of those under the belt and it'll make the crank pulley slip. Well, we'll clean all the squirrel bits out of the hidey holes. Let's get this belt, uh, let's get this water pump off. Oh, more pink. Bleed now. Crank mark, right cam, left cam. Gotta think about that backwards. It's on the mark. I think that's right. My mirror go. My dot there. I was able to slide my tensioner down in from the top. I'm on my mark there, I'm on my mark there. turns and make sure our alignment marks all line back up. So I was sitting here looking at my timing belt before I rolled it over and I'm like, I've got my belt on backwards. Passenger side is the right cam, driver side is the left cam. I've got my left cam here and my right cam here, so I have the belt on backwards. Which leaves me slack over here, which is what I was looking at. I'm like, I shouldn't have any slack there because my marks are all lined up, so I'm going to pop the tensioner off, pop the tensioner pulley back off, turn my belt around, and put it back together the correct way. Because that's what you do when you make mistakes, you, you fix them. We all make mistakes. Oh, right in the bucket, that's not going to be good for the light. That can't be good. 
This is one that's broken open. Pretty durable little guys though. Especially when I throw them in a bucket of engine coolant. We'll see how long that guy lasts. <laughs> 19 foot pounds on the tensioner. Go ahead and put my lower cover on and roll this through a couple of times. I know my mark for my right can is on my mark. The mark for my left can is on my mark. And my mark for my crank pulley is on my mark. So I should be in time. I just threw that into the drink. That was dumb. Now we gently roll her over two times. Our, our marks on the belt will line up again after you turn it. But the marks from the pulleys to the components, component marks should all line up. And I can feel it making compression. So that's good. So I'm on my zero mark with my timing mark. I'm on my timing mark with my timing mark. And I'm on my timing mark with my timing mark. So this engine should be in time. Now I will put it all back together and then we'll turn the key. First, I'm gonna pull the grenade pin. Now it's ready to blow. Sorry, I had to take a break from filming because my battery went dead. But I think I have everything back together. We get our radiator hooked up and our transmission cooler lines hooked up to the radiator. That's the important part. And then we should be able to see if this thing will fire up and run, which would be very, very good for me and the customer. <laughs> well, now it's the time, the moment of truth. Did I do my job correctly? <laughs> Let's find out. I did a thing! Did you make it live? It lives. I gotta, put, cool I gotta put cool in it. Belt's a little squeaky. I think this thing was parked for a while. Did you say, didn't you say you found a dauber or something? I found uh, acorn shells in the belt, uh, behind the belt cover, but I also found like belt. chunks of, like it felt, you could actually feel like tumors on the back of the belt because it was compacted inside of it. Okay. So. That was probably what did it. Get, a, get some nuts in the belt and it screws everything up. <laughs> so I like getting caught in no. I don't like getting my, my nuts caught in the belt either. <laughs> <laughs> That's not great. Uh oh. I'm sitting at my desk and I'm getting lightheaded. I'm like, what in the world is going on? I think I'll pull this outside. <laughs> I'm about to pass out. What's going on? Holy cow. What's, what's it smell like? Paint? A really aggressive paint. Well, there's a lot of fuel in this chamber. I'm sure there's a lot of fuel in those chambers. <laughs> 
Well, it runs, so that's a progress over what it, what it came in here with. Uh, I'm gonna grab my coat and my cell phone, and I'm gonna take this thing for a drive. Hopefully, I'll make it back with uh, not any problems. It's cold today. I don't feel like walking, so I'll be right back. Well, that wraps up this session with a Toyota Tundra uh, 4.7 V8 timing belt issue. Oddly enough, it still had compression, which is probably what threw off the other technicians at the other shop, who then said, send it to Lou Cork because he'll fix it. He fixes everything, just like Mikey. So, <coughs> really, honestly, it's a pretty clean truck, 160,000 miles. Uh, it's good to go for another 90,000 miles before it's next belt and water pump. Uh, should really make the owner happy that he doesn't need to buy an engine for it. But uh, it may end up needing catalytic converters after the amount of raw fuel that went through it. It did just have an engine oil change at the other shop, 11.9 11, of last year. Um, so a couple months ago, and at least by the sticker. But with the amount of fuel that was sitting in that engine, I'm probably going to recommend they, that we change the engine oil in it again just to get all the raw fuel out of the engine oil. That way we have good lubricity and, you know, it's just probably going to be better for the long-term uh, survival of this engine. Uh, we'll keep you informed if the cats go out. I'm sure the customer will let us know. It did have a standing misfire after I had it getting warmed up in cylinders number one and number seven. Uh, those went away, I cleared the codes, I test drove it, and they didn't come back. So it was probably build up a fuel or maybe it washed out a spark plug for a little bit. Um, and then it cleared up and it seems to be driving great now. So one more in the wind section. Check that one off. Thanks for coming along. It took a, took a bit of thinking and took a bit of tear down before we could actually verify what the problem was. At any rate, thanks for watching. Click like, subscribe, leave us a comment below. Have a safe and awesome day. We'll see you soon.